We're gonna get at it. Ready? To the creek. Let's go. Uh oh. Whoa. Uh -oh. <whistles> wow. What do we got? It's the bass. Okay, I figure I better take a minute and show, show you a paw, what a pawpaw patch looks like in case you don't know. Pretty good size one there. And uh, that's uh, that's ready to eat. Yeah, it's incredible. All right. All right, here we are. We out here on the countryside. We're going to get ready to do, do some creek fishing again. Yeah, tear them up. We're going to head down this little bunny trail right here. You see this? See this path going down here? Yeah, some big bunnies been going down there. Um, yeah, the river's right down here to my left, about 100 yards. But you can see these oak trees. That oak, those oak trees are just lined up on a bluff that drops straight down. I don't want to tromp down through that. We're gonna take. We're gonna go down this bunny trail. It looks like it makes a gradual descent down there into the valley floor, and we'll meet up with the creek down there somewhere. But I've never been here before. I've fished this creek before, but further down the river, four or five miles. But we're gonna get at it. Ready? To the creek. Let's go. Three weeks later, I still only can find the puny chanterelles. Weird little coral mushroom. He was growing out of the dirt. I've never found a coral growing out of the dirt. They've always been in wood and in the fall. I've never found a summer coral. Yep, puny shanties. Yeah. What do we got? First fish of the day. Little baby bluegill. Cool. I'm uh, just starting out with a worm and bobber. And, uh, might switch back and forth with some, uh, throw some jigs because uh, these pools of water look big enough to hold some, hold some bass and stuff. So um, we'll see, we'll see what's going on. Uh oh, we got here second fish coming in, Mr. Big Mouth Bass. Yeah. Nice. Looks a little thin, but pretty healthy overall. All right. 
two fish here in about uh, 15 seconds. Nice little bass. Let's see if we can keep it going. Uh oh. Whoa. It's a good little fish. Another bit of big mouth. <whistles> wow. Nice. All right. Yeah, first week of September. You can see some leaves on the water out there. Um, hopefully, we get some decent audio today. It's really windy. We got a good. Uh, you know 30 mile an hour wind gust today and everything so we'll work through it nice whoa yeah basilrama Yeah, I just brought my ultralight today, uh, working with uh, six pound mono and uh, starting out with uh, live bait, uh, worm and a bobber. Um, you know, I like my live bait, um, you know, especially in a creek like this, I always want to leave myself open to the possibility of, um, of catching some catfish and uh, your odds are better with uh, live bait. Um, so we'll see. Whoa, 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 whoa. They can drag. Oh, dude. That was a nice fish. That was four or five pound bass, I think. It came up on the surface when it let go. Man. That big goldfish. Yeah. Man, that'd be some nice flathead bait right there. Nice little carp. Oh my goodness, that'd be some good bait. Wow. Shoot. Oh, cute guy. A little bluegill. Gotta have some of those.
do we got? Mr. Bass. This is turning out to be an incredible, incredible creek. Maybe it's just this hole. I don't know. This is the first hole I've stopped at. So, but uh, yeah, it's incredible. Um, yeah, you just can't, you can't go wrong um, when you're fishing a hole like this. Um, it doesn't really matter where you throw it, uh, what kind of bait you're using. I mean, within sensible reason, um, you know what I'm saying. Um, there's no wrong way to fish it. Um, it's just, it's just full, it's just full of fish. That's all there is to it. Um, it's just, it's just, uh, it's just pure luck that I've, uh, came upon this spot. Um, but, um, you know, live bait, uh, throwing a twister tail, throwing some kind of a, a, a spinner, um, you know, crickets, uh, you can't go wrong with, with how you would, uh, um, present a bait fishing this kind of hole. Um. Yeah, I mean, you see how you can see how skinny it gets. This, this look up behind me here. There's a, a rock bar here that uh, it literally pinches itself off to nothing there. And you can see there's another hole up ahead there. And uh, I mean, this it actually over here. It looks like this is totally pinched off. Um, looks like a beaver um, dammed up this uh, this little run of water here where it goes on around up there. Looks like a beaver's pinched it off. It might be natural debris plugging it up. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I'd have to get over there close to look at it. Yeah, it's definitely the work of a beaver here. He packed it all up with mud and dammed up the little flow here. Another little one right there. They yeah, pinched it off pretty good. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Look at that creek bass. <laughs> wow. What? My. Look at that toad. The tiny creek. Yeah. Chong. Yeah, you all remember those, huh? Old school. Little clip-on clip on spinners. Yeah, it keeps your tackle box light, you know? Um, you need very minimum, minimal tackle when you're, you know, I'm walking back down in here in the timber for a mile um, through cornfields and, and thickets and briars and nettles, and you don't need to be carrying a bunch of tackle with you. Um, you know, you got your hooks, your weights, your, uh, your, your twister tails, maybe a few crappie jigs, your plain hooks, and a couple snap-on spinners. Uh, that's all you need. Replaces some big, heavy spinner baits. Um, you don't have to have your MEPS with you. You don't have to have any of that. Um, super versatile. Um, couple different, couple different sizes and shapes of these, and uh, keeps your tackle light. Keeps it simple. Um, a spinner's a spinner. If they want a spinner, they're going to be biting these. They've been, they've been around for years. Years and years. Little clip on spinners. Beetle spins.
Woo! What a gorgeous fish. My goodness. Beautiful. Looks like pawpaws are going to be thick. Um, these are pawpaw trees. They'll get a better shot on them. There's some pawpaws right there. It's a native indigenous fruit. Quite a few in this tree. It's gonna be a good year. I see uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven in this little tree. And that's without looking very hard. So, okay, I figure I better take a minute show show you a paw, what a pawpaw patch looks like. In case you don't know, uh, pawpaw patch is um, just an area where um, pawpaws will grow. And usually, when you find one pawpaw tree, um, you'll find more. Uh, pawpaw is an indigenous fruit. Um, I think throughout a lot of North America, but um, yeah, they're kind of like a, a banana, um, and uh, they'll be ripe here pretty soon. Couple more weeks but they'll be ready here pretty short um these right here these yeah, so you can see here we're the, the creeks right there i don't know if we can see it down there creeks right there you're always going to find pawpaws next to a creek under really dark shade um they will only grow in shade um in the wild um you'll you'll i've never seen one out in open sunlight um but uh for them to sprout they in the first couple years of life they have to be in shade um they won't survive in direct sunlight um, darker the shade the better so they're under the canopy of a, of a forest floor um, always so these are pawpaw trees um, they really don't get much bigger than that in the wild uh, three or four inches around and they get maybe um, like 16 8 feet, 18 feet tall um, but each one of these is a pawpaw um, the, any of these little skinnier ones um, this one here um, this one this one this one and uh, of course some of the larger trees are are um, other types but like I say they don't get they don't get much bigger than that okay a couple inches around and um, yeah like I said 16 foot tall you won't see them no bigger than that um, but a small tree like that can support a lot of fruit um, this one here there's a couple right there one there by himself one up there, a couple right there. Some Sometimes they're in clumps like that, sometimes they're singles. Um, there's a big one right there. And they get bigger than that. Um, they get up to the size of like a, a large Idaho potato, big big potato, russet potato. A couple big ones up there. Uh, the leaves are really big. They're really big leaves and kind of tropical looking. Little hangers right here. Pretty good size one there, and uh, that's uh, that's ready to eat. It's pretty soft. That's surprising. It must be in a bit on the unhealthy side, or maybe because it's uh, low, not getting the exact amount of sun that it does want. Like I say, they want they want a lot of shade, but uh, yeah. We'll give this guy a try because that's pretty soft and it's pretty early for it to be that soft like i say i don't know why it must be it must be because he's so low hanging he's not getting the sunlight that he does need they don't want much sunlight but he's so low to the ground uh, he's just chest high to me so, um that must be why give him a try hang on all right here we go that kind of look like a banana lots of seeds in them just got to spit the seeds out when they're um if you don't know the definition of bitter you'll know if you eat a bitter pawpaw if it ain't ripe yet but that one looks pretty good um yeah they'll taste like a straight turpentine gasoline whatever it tastes like a chemical they're terrible if you eat them too early 
and uh, yeah, look like a banana. Mm-hmm. It's really perfect. Sorry, real deal. I'm in the woods. What do you want me to do? It's real good. That has excellent flavor. That's some of the best pop I ever tasted, actually. I like it that. Kept it on film. It's it's really hard to um, hit the right window of when they're ripe. It can only be a couple of days, two, three, four days tops. They'll go from ripe, just like this, absolutely perfect, where they're mushy, right? They're mushy. You see how mushy that is? To the point where... Um, if you break one in half and squeeze it, it'll just blop and just ooze out like almost like liquid. Like a, a, a real thick, uh, like a runny gel. There's a seed. Pretty big. They're the size of a um, like a big uh, chili bean or whatever, red bean. I'm surprised how good it is. That's, um, that's pretty early. First week of uh, September. You've probably seen enough of me eating this, dude. Um, but yeah, um, they never um, became a commercial fruit because um, they're too hard to ship. They're only ripe for a couple of days, and uh, they bruise real easy. Um, you know, they've uh, farmers have tried to um, make hybrids of them, and uh, um, so they um, can tr be transported on on trucks and stuff, and be packed in in boxes or whatever. Um, but they don't seem to have much of a success, I guess. Um, I've never seen one in the store. They just bruise. They just bruise too easy, and they, they lose their ripeness, and they go from unedible, bitter, to four days late, being overripe, and tastes like, um, like I said, almost turned to liquid. A uh, real short window when you can eat them, but uh, you can imagine back in the day, man, um, Native Americans or pioneers um, coming across pawpaws when they were when they were ready to eat. Man, what a treat! All right, that was a good one, Papa. Yeah, that one's still rock hard, firm. Got lucky on that guy, I think. That was uh, one of the best Papa's I ever had in my life, really. Still creek fishing. Love it. You got to love it. Um, for you guys uh don't creek fish, uh, don't fish at all, I'm sorry. Get out, get out and do what you love. But hey, yeah. Um, if you never did any creek fishing and you love being outside and you love fishing and you and you you just seem to like you, you get burnt out on fishing sometimes because you never have any luck. Um, you're getting out your heavy river rods and you're going casting huge bait for catfish. You never have any luck, or you're you're pounding the bank with a, a bobber and a jig, or going to the, going out to the big lake and you're never having any luck and and it gets frustrating. Um, keep at it. You'll learn. You'll pick up on things. You just got to keep doing it like anything to be good at it. Um, and if you're frustrated with it, though, try a small creek. You could tear them up. Right there's a perfect example. Jumped down into the woods, went right to one hole. Never been here before. First time. Honest. Never been there. It just happened. It was pure luck. Dropped right down out of the woods into that first hole and tore them up. Look at the size of that bass I caught. Little tiny creek. That's the common opportunities creeks offer. Um, it's easy fishing. It, it takes no skill. It takes no effort. Throw a jig, throw a worm out there, boom. Just need a handful of stuff in your pocket and your fishing pole and go. Keep it simple. Keep it real. Keep it simple. Hey, appreciate it. Um, whatever, whatever it is that floats your boat in life, get out there and do it. Um, if you don't know what it is, I mean, you do know what it is. You know, you know what your passion is. You know what your love is. Um, don't get caught up in the in the in the drama of this of this world. Um, li life is better than that. Go out and do what you love. All right. Hey, appreciate it. You know what it is. You already know. Go out and do it and uh, do it to the fullest and do it some more. Hey, appreciate you coming along. Thanks to all the subscribers. I appreciate it. Hey, we'll see you at the next spot. All right. Later.